In this video, we will be going over um, the causes and consequences for uh, European colonialism in Africa, known as the African Scramble. So let's begin. So industrialization stirred ambitions in many European nations. They wanted more resources to fuel their industrial production. Uh, so they competed for new markets for industrial products. And as a result, colonial power seized the vast areas of Africa during the 19th and, tw and early 20th century. Um, so the seizure throughout most of Africa uh, was known to be called imperialism. So uh, the Industrial Revolution in particular provided European countries with a reason to add land to their control. The Industrial Revolution in particular provided countries with a reason to add lands to their control. As the European nations uh, industrialized, they searched for new markets and raw materials to improve their economies. Uh, and there was also this belief in European superiority, uh, meaning that the race for colonies also grew out of a strong sense of national pride. Uh, Europeans viewed an empire as a measure of national greatness. And um, as the competition for colonies intensified, each country was determined to plant a flag on as many uh, on as much of the world as possible. So there is this belief in European superiority. Uh, many Europeans believed that they were better than other peoples. Uh, this belief that one race is superior to the other, known as um, more in simpler terms, racism. So this attitude was a reflection of social Darwinism, a social theory of the time. In this theory, Charles Darwinism's ideas about evolution and natural selections were applied to human society. So those who were fittest for survival enjoyed wealth and success and were considered superior to others. According to the theory, non-Europeans were considered to be on a lower scale of cultural and physical development because they had not made the scientific and technological pro progress that Europeans had. If we study world history, we know that this is not true. So let's examine factors promoting imperialism in Africa. So technological superiority uh, played a big role in why um, Europeans had an advantage in uh, taking over most of Africa. So the Max gun introduced in 1884 was the world's first automatic machine gun. And while Africans did rely, uh, so many Africans relied on outdated weapons against the Max gun. And then they had, and then the Europeans also had steam engines, uh, which allowed Europeans to easily travel on rivers to establish bases of control uh, deep in Africa. And railroads, cables, and steamships allowed close communications within a colony and between the colony and its controlling nation. So the consequences of the division of Africa uh, were, which began in 1880, were that um, the French began to expand from West Africa, African coast towards Western Sudan, and these discoveries of diamonds in 1867 and gold in 1886 in South Africa increased European interest in uh, colonizing the cont uh, continent. So no European power wanted to be left out of the race. And Africa was actually divided um, during the Berlin Conference. Um, so the competition was so fierce that European countries feared war among themselves. And so to prevent conflict, 14 European nations met at the Berlin Conference in 1884 uh, to lay down the rules of the division of Africa. So this meant that any European country could claim land in Africa by notifying other nations of its claim and showing it could control the area. And European nations divided the continent with little thought about how African African ethnic or linguistic groups would be disturbed. So there were some pros and cons of the legacy that was left behind by colonial 
rule. Uh, Cons were Africans lost their land and their independence. Many died of new diseases, such as smallpox. And Africans suffered the loss of their culture. Uh, They were driven out of their home to find new land and living elsewhere. Uh, The divisions of land among Europeans continue to this day to cause political problems for nations that were involved in former colonies. Uh, Some of the pros can be considered that there is a reduced local warfare and humanitarian efforts in some colonial uh, and some colonies uh, improved. Sorry. And in other sanitation, schools and hospitals improved. And as a result, lifespan increased and literacy improved. And we start to see an economic growth. African products became valued on the international market. And although all these are all positive effects, they only benefited European business interests. So now that we went over um, the causes and consequences of the African scramble, I hope this helps you viewers understand a little bit more about it.